Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to my fly tying channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. So I put this channel together to share my love of salmon flies and fly tying. Uh, there's a little bit of something for everybody here. Um, I do showcase a lot of, you know, uh, very artsy, very um, specific, um, hard to tie salmon flies. But I also do tie a lot of, uh, you know, Pacific Northwest patterns, spay flies, D flies, things like that. So if you've got any uh, flies that you'd like to see tied, uh, something that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, by all means, please reach out to me, leave a message, um, comment in my videos, um, just leave a request. I'm happy to get to them. Uh, now, all that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Let's get on with it. All right, welcome back to Material Mondays, everyone. I hope you all had a great weekend, and uh, hopefully your day has started off great, and um, you know, here's to the uh, great rest of the week. So today's video, probably going to be a little bit of a shorter video. Uh, this is more of just to show you uh, the different pheasant tails that are commonly used in salmon flies. Um, I'll give you a little background on some of the birds and, uh, you know, we'll discuss this, the, the feathers and the feather structure and then, um, you know, we'll take a look at a couple of the hybrids that I've got here. Um, so this bottom one here we'll start with is, it's an Amherst uh, mutation, I, I was told, um, but I haven't been able to find a lot of information on it, so being able to tell exactly what it is, um, I have a feeling it's a cross of some kind, but I'm not sure. If you look at the color, it is actually like a gray, whereas Amherst is white and is actually more checkered in between the barring. And if you also look, the barring on this is more consistent and even, whereas this is not quite as even, and it's a little bit more wavy so um, it's the pattern's similar so it makes me believe that this is definitely an Amherst of some sort but uh, I, I don't know if it was crossed with something or, or not uh, but the feather structure itself as far as the uh, fibers is very similar to an Amherst their um, their marrying capabilities is is good with itself but I haven't tried using it to marry it with uh, anything else yet and I'm not sure I'm going to because I don't know if I'll see another one of these feathers anytime in the near future. But the feather structure seems to be very similar to an Amherst. It doesn't look like it would be overly easy to marry. Uh, Amherst in itself can be somewhat difficult, as I'm sure many of you have already discovered. Um, you know, it, it doesn't take much to pull them apart uh, and getting them back together on themselves isn't bad, but when you start incorporating other materials, sometimes they can be kind of a pain in the butt depending on the feather that you have. Um, the higher quality feathers will be ones that, you know, have more of an even tip and are less broken up. Where This one I would consider to be a, a pretty decent quality feather. Um, I've had some other Amherst feather, uh, pheasant feathers where all of these are all just coming apart and they don't want to marry back together. And, um, you know, when you buy a lot of, like, bulk Amherst, like say off of eBay, or if you get it off of Etsy, you might wind up with a lot of that. Same thing with the golden pheasant. Um, so, if you look at these, these feathers are also quite long. Amherst has one of the longest, excuse me, one of the longest tails with the ornamental pheasants. Um, at least the more common ornamental pheasants. Uh, we'll come back to this one in just a minute. This is an amgold pheasant feather, um, and we'll come back to that. But here's a golden pheasant, and this is actually a pretty decent feather. Uh, same thing with these, you know, ones that have a nice clean edge along here that aren't all split up and coming apart. Um, this would be a, a pretty decent quality feather. Uh, it came off a nice pair. Um, Ones like this are becoming a little bit more difficult to find, uh, but you can find both the Golden Pheasant and the Amherst at uh, feathersmc.com. Uh, John McLean over there, he does have uh, some of those. That's usually where I get them from. And as you can see, these have some relatively nice long fibers as well. And this one here um, is very similar to one that I've been using. I'll grab that one quick. See here, I've already used some pieces out of this one. 
and it marries together quite nicely actually. Um, they're relatively long, but you wouldn't be able to get anything uh, over maybe a 4 or 5.0 out of this. Um, 5.0 probably would be the limit on it, but still uh, a rather nice feather and it does marry quite well. So now if you take the golden pheasant and the Amherst pheasant and you cross them, you wind up getting an am gold. Now, this would be considered a dark am gold. The dark am gold would have a would typically have a golden pheasant father and an Amherst mother. Now, if you had a lighter colored one, which is almost a very very it's almost white, but just not quite. That would be an Amherst father and a golden mother. So that's how you get the am gold cross and that's how you get the light and uh darker colored tails. Uh, now, these two, the Amherst and the Golden, are both uh, native to Southwest Asia. Um, you know, right, they, the Golden Pheasant is considered uh, um, the Chinese pheasant, they call it. Now, with the Golden Pheasant, though, because of its popularity, it's an area of least concern. There's, uh, it's not endangered, neither is the Amherst. Um, but the Golden has actually, because of its popularity, has been raised in captivity all over the world. So when that happens, there's usually wild populations that spring up just because birds escape. And sometimes people, uh, you know, they let go the pheasants. They can't raise them anymore or something. But um, there's, there's wild populations in the United States, in Germany, in South America, Mexico, Canada. So they can withstand colder temperatures. They are relatively easy to breed in captivity. Uh, same thing with the Amherst. Um, the Amherst, though, isn't quite as widespread throughout the world. Um, there are some wild populations that have been seen, but not very often. You, mostly it's the golden that gets seen. So, just a little background on those. Uh, and then right here, we have the tail feather, the center tail feather from an Argus pheasant. Um, these here are used a lot in wings. Um, the Argus pheasant is uh, native to like Borneo, Sumatra, uh, that area of the world. Now, this is um, considered a vulnerable species, so it is... Um, it's in the threatened category, so uh, it, it's lightly threatened. However, there are breeders. Uh, there's some in the United States. There's some in Denmark uh, that do regularly sell uh, feathers from their their birds. Um, so wild populations are not being you know hunted or anything for their feathers. Um, at least not that I've come across. Usually, I just deal with um, breeders. Uh, you can find them on eBay, you can find them on uh, Etsy, though Etsy, they tend to be extremely expensive. Uh, eBay, you're, you're more likely to find some affordable feathers. Um, and then on to one more is the silver pheasant. Now the silver pheasant, um, that one also is native to Asia, uh, but also has some wild populations that have sprung up throughout the world due to breeding. Um, in captivity. And again, those silver pheasants are also not um, an endangered species or threatened or they're in an area of least concern. Uh, the tail that I have for, this is not a, a true silver tail, this is actually a silver college pheasant cross. The two of them look very, very similar um, and are often interbred. And when you interbreed them, you get darker barring. So I'll show you the tail first. Now this one, once the, you know, once the tail is taken off of here, it'll get steamed and cleaned and reshaped so it doesn't have this curl. That's just from being in the box. And you can see the barring on these. Um, these are very common for blacker flies. So if you're into tying, uh, you know, flies by William Blacker, um, these feathers are great. And then the body feathers, since I had the skin out, I'll show you. This is the back. On a silver pheasant, these are much lighter. They're, the barring isn't quite as pronounced, um, but as you can see on this one, they're, they're quite dark and uh, really is a very beautiful bird. Um, but these would be absolutely amazing for throats on some salmon flies, but also uh, if you're tying like a gray ghost, these would be fantastic. So, uh, yeah, those are, the, those are the main pheasant feathers that I use. Uh, another feather that you could use that I don't use uh, often is the tail from the Manal Impian pheasant. 
and those are actually found uh, out by Nepal and if you go to Nepal they're in the specific elevations I believe it's somewhere around 2100 feet to about 4600 foot elevation um, they're very specific to that they don't uh, they don't travel lower or higher than that so um, they are also a vulnerable species uh, so you know skins or feathers that you find typically for the most part are going to be from breeders or uh, from one that's been around uh, from a mount or something but these feathers um, can be used for uh, a kite sub or if you hear um, oh, what's the word either kite or gleed g-l-e-d-e -E. um, this would be a, this is a great sub for that so other than these uh, you know there are dozens of species of pheasants there's you know there's blood pheasants and um, I don't have any blood pheasant feathers um, but uh, they're not really commonly used those would be more for you know like artistic purposes I haven't come across any patterns that do have blood pheasant in them though I'm sure that there there are patterns out there um, so if anybody in the anybody watching if you've got any information on blood pheasants and um, any patterns that may contain blood pheasants please uh, Leave it in the comments below. Um, another another pheasant is the uh, Western Tragopan pheasant, or the Temenix Tragopan, uh, the Satire Tragopan. I don't have tail feathers from them to show for today, um, but the Western Tragopan is extremely endangered, and um, feathers are very very hard to come by, and they're not cheap. Um, but uh, those are also found out by Nepal and. Um, you know, being very rare, they're also very difficult to breed in captivity, so uh, they're not something that's very common, um, and often substitutes are used for those. So, um, anyway, uh, that's just uh, my little spiel on pheasant tails. You know, there's so many different things that you can do with pheasant tails within your mixed wings. Um, my most recent video I put out the other day was uh, the Jock Scott. That used amgold instead of golden pheasant. Um, only reason being is the amgold is typically longer than the golden pheasant. Uh, you get the length of the Amherst, but more of the color and marking of the golden. Um, it's a nice thing about the uh, amgold. So doing larger flies, you know, seven aught, eight aught, um, six aught, pardon me, uh, those typically have, uh, you know, you're gonna need something a bit longer than golden pheasant. There might, there is some golden pheasant out there that is longer uh, than three inches, but I haven't seen any in a very, very long time. So I typically just go to the Amgold. The Amgold is also rather difficult to find because um, there's only so many people that breed them throughout the world. And to get a nice full tail, you have to have a mature adult. Uh, this tail here came from an adult that was five and a half to six years old. So when you're talking about that kind of time to raise a bird, um, you know, there's a lot of time, there's a lot of money invested, and um, I don't imagine you get very many out of a, out of, uh, a, uh, a crop of eggs. So, but then again, I'm not a breeder. I don't 100% know how that works. I just know that they are rather difficult to find. And when you do find them, they're a little on the pricey side. So um, just keep that in mind. But, uh, you know, all of these feathers are mostly available the amherst the golden the uh, argus and silver pheasant you know those are relatively easy to find if you just do a search on ebay or uh, etsy um, or if you know somebody that's uh, really big into salmon flies you might be able to get some from them uh, like i said before amherst and golden you can get from feathers mc you can get um, argus tail you can get uh, little sections of argus tail from feathers mc also um, I have not seen silver pheasant over there uh, in a while, but uh, those three I know for sure are there. So if you're interested and you're, uh, you want to look for some, go right ahead and uh, head over to feathersmc.com. Not a sponsor, by the way. And you can see on these, some of these are quite nice and quite long. And they really do leave a beautiful profile and uh, beautiful coloration to uh, salmon flies. So... Um, all that being said, I got, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if I didn't really touch on anything that you wanted to know, 
uh, and you have any questions that have popped up throughout the video, please leave it in the comment section below or reach out to me personally. Uh, you can find me on Facebook or on Instagram. And, um, you know, just uh, let me know what, you, what, what you're what you looking for for information or um, if you'd like to see something specific tied uh, with one of these, let me know and I'd be happy to get to it. So, uh, hope you guys have yourselves a wonderful day, a wonderful week. And uh, I likely will not have a fly out during the week this week. I'll be heading to uh, Philadelphia to the hospital again. Um, but uh, when I get back, I will get right back on and uh, we'll do a nice fly. Maybe even do a live video. So, all that being said, have a great day. Take care, everyone. And I will see you in the next.